words. I think the best approach to this is to identify or notation what it means and then work through an example with them. We'll do some simple examples to start us off and we'll do some more complicated ones after we get all of our notation in place. So the first thing we're going to look at the combination of functions by addition. When you see this notation, it's going to say find and simplify g plus h of x. This means that you're going to take your g of x equation and add it to your h of x equation. So your g of x equation is 3x plus 9. We're going to add that to our h of x equation, which is negative 12x squared minus 24x plus 36. You can see that where I had g of x, I'm plugging in what it was equal to. And where I had h of x, I'm plugging in what it was equal to. Now, in this case, the parentheses was just showing me those groupings. It doesn't change anything about the terms that are inside of it. And so what I'm going to do from now, I'm going to do now is I am going to combine like terms. I have a negative 12x squared. And it's the only x squared, so I'm going to bring that down. I have a 3x and a negative 24x. So that's going to combine to give me a negative 21x. And then I have a positive 9 and a positive 36. So that's going to combine to give me a positive 45. So when I'm adding g plus h of x, this is my final result. Now don't overwork the problem. We are trying to find and simplify. We are not trying to take this down to what is x equal to. We are only trying to find a new equation. Don't overwork it to find any kind of x values. Don't overcombine them. They have to have the same variable, the same exponent. I cannot put these two together because one is squared and one is x to the first power. So addition is not too bad. Subtraction changes it up a little bit. So let's look at the next situation. It says find and simplify h minus g of x. Again, as a reminder, this means that you are taking h of x, whatever is listed first, and subtracting out g of x. Now it is always good form for us to just do this in parentheses. So this would be a negative 12x squared minus 24x plus 36. Then I am subtracting our g of x, which is 3x plus 9. Now with this one, it does matter that I put it in the grouping because I want you to note that we are subtracting this entire back half. So in order to do this correctly and make sure I don't mess up any symbols, I'm going to distribute this negative throughout the back parentheses, which just changes all the signs. Now when I go in here to combine like terms, just like what we did in addition, you can see I have an x squared. So I would say that that is negative 12x squared. And then you can see I have a negative 24x and this time a negative 3x. So that would give me a total of negative 27x. You can see we're already different than addition. Next, we're going to look at our constant terms. I have a positive 36 and a negative 9. So positive 36 and negative 9 give me a positive 27. Just using my calculator to assist me with that arithmetic. So you can see in the case of adding these two together or subtracting them, it does make a difference. The key thing that you need to remember with subtraction is just make sure that you are distributing this negative throughout the back parentheses, not just to the three, everything in that back function that is being subtracted. So all of g of x got subtracted. Again, don't overwork it, don't overcombine it. The next one, it gets a little bit I would say it amps up a little bit more from your addition and subtraction. So addition is just combining your like terms. Subtraction, we have to remember to distribute the negative and then combine like terms. In this example, we are going to do g of x times h of x. Again, notationally, this might look like g h of x. Sometimes they'll put those two alphabeticals together and then put the x behind it. But this means we're going to have to multiply this together. So I'm going to show you two different ways that we can multiply these. First, I'm going to write it. I've got 3x plus 9 times negative 12x squared minus 24x plus 36. And the first way that I want to show this to you is something called the box method. And maybe you've seen this in a previous course. The box method, all it does is just give you an organized way of multiplying things together. What you can do is you can put one polynomial or one of those functions down the side. So for me, I'm going to put the 3x 
and the positive 9 down the left-hand side. And then across the top, I'm going to say negative 12x squared minus 24x plus 36. I'm going to get everything in the right place. So I'm going to start multiplying. You may have seen this in science when you work with genetic factors looking at recessive or dominant traits. So I'm going to say 3x times negative 12x squared to give me negative 36x cubed. Make sure when you're multiplying things together that you are looking at the fact of the exponents are going to add together. Then what you want to do is you want to go to the next one and say, okay, 3x times negative 24x. That gives me a negative 72x squared. So again, you multiply the coefficients together, 3 and negative 24. X times X, you add those exponents to give you a second power. And then you'll do 3X times 36. 3X times 36 gives me a 108X. Next, I'll go into the next row, and now I'm going to be working with positive 9. I'm going to be multiplying them across the top by these terms. 9 times negative 12X squared gives me a negative 108X squared. 9 times negative 24x gives me a negative 216x. 9 times 36 gives me 324. So creating this box to help me to multiply each term helps me to stay organized in what I'm doing, but it also helps with the cleanup. So you can see that I only have a cubed term here. And so I would say negative 36x cubed. Then I go into the next piece. You can see that here's my two squared terms. And so when I combine those two together, that gives me negative 180x squared. And then I'll go into my singular x terms, so I could put those two together, and that gives me a negative 108x. And then lastly, I just have this singular 324, so I'll say plus 324. So multiplying the two functions together goes off the basis of how to multiply and distribute things out. But I wanted to show you this organizational tool of creating a box, and that kind of helps you keep straight from row and column and getting those pieces. And then you can go through and add them together. Now, we can also look at this in a different way. So I'm going to work the same problem, but not use the box. So what you can do is just distribute. What we are doing is multiplying by distributing everything in G times everything in H. I am not going to multiply the 3x times the 9 because they both exist in G, and I'm doing all of G times all of H. I'm going to take 3x. I'm going to distribute it into all three of these pieces. So 3x gets multiplied into all of H of x to give you negative 36x squared minus 72x squared plus 108x, and that's just doing 3x times the negative 12, but you can see we did these terms over here. That's how I did that so quickly. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take 9, and you're going to distribute it into all of h. Again, that's what we already did in our box method, and so that would give you negative 108x squared. You would do 9 times the negative 24x, so it gives you negative 216x and then 9 times the 36, which gives you plus 324. You can see it's all the same terms that we have in our box method, and again, you just combine those together like we saw in the addition at the first example, and that's how you get there. So it definitely is in more in-depth. There is more room for error in the piece that you have, but I just want to show you how when we are multiplying the two together, we're distributing everything in G to everything in H. Now the last way we need to look at, we've done addition, subtraction, multiplication. The last one is going to be division. So we did addition, subtraction, multiplication, now division. The key with division is this. When you're working with the division, you want to be able to also add in a conversation about domain. Because we are setting this up, and let me write this vertically for you, this is also the same thing as writing f of x over g of x. And we learned in our domain discussion that when you have a rational function like that or you have a fraction like that, your denominator cannot equal zero. And so the last notation you might see with this is you might see f over g of x being consistent with our earlier notations. So what we're going to do is we are definitely going to set this up as division. So if I'm taking f of x that's equal to 7x, I'm going to put that over g of x, which is 3x plus 9. 
And then after I have the setup, if I can simplify it by all means, always simplify answer down to lowest terms. But in this case, I cannot simplify that. I cannot come in here and go, eh, mark those X's out. That's some bad math right there. You can't ever mark out on top and bottom unless you have multiplication on top and bottom. And we'll get to some of those examples. So in this case, we're just going to leave it the way it is. So the next thing we need to do is state what the domain of this function would be because it's not every single possible x. And in order to do that, you're going to set the bottom and say it cannot equal to 0. So I'm going to say, well, 3x plus 9 cannot equal 0. I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 9. That gives me 3x cannot be equal to negative 9 and then divide by 3. So x cannot equal negative 3. So that means my domain for this function would be everything but negative 3. So as you're working through these combinations of functions, this is what you're going to see. You're going to have to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and then with division, you're going to have to state the domain restrictions. And you'll see an answer blank for that. So this was just some simple examples of adding and subtracting. The next thing I want to go into is just some more complicated examples. Not necessarily um, in the fact of combining them, but we need to go back and remember some of our fraction properties from back when you learned fractions. And so I think this is a good example for us to do, and you also have probably have one of these in your homework as well. It says find and simplify the following. And you'll notice the notation is the same notation from earlier. We are going to be adding and subtracting and multiplying, and we even have a division there. So I just want to kind of review this example with you, make sure you remember some of your fraction properties. One of the fraction properties I want to go over with you is the adding and subtracting. And before we get into this example, I just want to kind of show you a tip or a trick on how to work with things, especially because these fractions have a letter in them. And so everyone loves that version. If you remember back to when you were working with, say, two sevenths plus three fifths, and you wanted to combine those two together, you would do the least common multiple between seven and five or find a common denominator. And you would say, well, that would be 35. So you'd multiply both pieces, etc. Well, the problem with this for us is we have x plus 1 and x minus 3. Like, how do I find a common denominator between unknowns? And so what I want to do is show you a little fraction trick. If you had a over b, some given fraction, you want to add or subtract it. So I'm going to put a plus over minus, meaning this works for addition, or this works for subtraction. And let's just do another generic fraction, c over d. A quick way to add or subtract two fractions together is to multiply this direction, which would give you a D, and then you're going to add or subtract whatever symbol you have in there. Multiply this direction, that would be B times C. And then we're going to multiply across the denominators. So we'll say all over B, D. And this quick process is going to help you in order to add and subtract fractions together, especially in college algebra or whatever course you are taking, in order to combine two fractions. And so what we're going to do is, let me show you that example with our earlier one, 2 sevenths, and we'll do plus 3 fifths. So we know we can get a common denominator, but with this, I'm going to multiply this direction, so that gives me 10. It was addition, so I'm going to say plus. You multiply this direction, 7 times 3, that gives you 21. All over, you multiply across the bottom, 35. And so that gives me the value of 31 over 35. Now, as always, a lot of times you learn tips and tricks, but you had to go through a slow process of words. So whoever taught you how to add and subtract fractions was not wrong. You had to understand we are getting common denominators, the least common multiples. All those steps along the way were really good. But now we're going to build off that knowledge and go into this shortcut and kind of put things together. So that answer would be 31 over 35. Now, for note's sake, we're going to jump back over here. I'm going to go ahead and erase this out here. Um, we're going to jump back over here and work with combining our fractions together. So in this first example, we're looking at f plus g of x. So our f function is 1 over x plus 1. And we're going to add it to our g function, which is 2x over x minus 3. And so what I want to do is I want to use that fraction trick. So I'm going to multiply this direction. Now, when you're multiplying, this is a grouping. So if it helps, maybe do parentheses around your grouping so you don't distribute incorrectly. So I'll say 
1 times the x minus 3, and that gives me x minus 3. It was addition, so I'm going to say plus. And then I'm going to multiply this way here. And that's going to give me 2x times x plus 1. So that's where that parenthesis is going to come in handy so I don't just multiply by the x. And then you're going to multiply across the bottom. And that leaves me with x plus 1 times x minus 3. Now you do always have to simplify your answers to lowest terms. So I'm going to leave the denominator alone. You'll see as we work through many different problems, it's always nice to leave things in factored form like that, not distributed out. But in the top, I definitely can simplify it. So I'm going to distribute the 2x in here. So this gives me x minus 3 plus 2x squared plus 2x. And then when I move into my next equal sign here, Let's see, I only have a 2x squared. I don't have any other terms I can put with it. And then I have a 2x and a singular x, so that gives me a plus 3x. And then lastly, I have a negative 3, so I'm going to say minus 3. Now that's all over these two factors, so I'll say x plus 1 and x minus 3. So that would be our final answer. And that is the combination or the addition of F plus G. Now we're going to work subtraction. We're going to do subtraction the exact same way. But remember that sign in the middle is what's going to change as we work through that process. So F is going to be 1 over X plus 1. And this time I'm going to subtract G. So I'm saying minus 2X over X minus 3. I'm going to do my fraction trick again. So I'm going to multiply this direction. So that gives me x minus 3. And then again, remember, see, this is subtraction. So I'm saying minus 2x times, because I'm multiplying this direction, x plus 1 all over. We're going to multiply this direction across those denominators to give me x plus 1 times x minus 3. Now I'm going to clean this up. So I'm going to say 2x times x. So let's see, I have an x minus 3. And when I'm doing that, I want to make sure I include that negative with that 2x. So I'm going to say minus 2x squared, negative 2x times positive 1, so minus 2x. All over, I'm going to leave the bottom as the two factors. Cleaning up the rest of the top, just doing my combination like I did before. So I have a negative 2x squared. And then I've got a positive x and a negative 2x, so it gives me minus x. And then I have a negative 3, so I'm saying minus 3. All over, parentheses, x plus 1, x minus 3. And so you can see we have a different result than our addition, and we just went real slow through that process. Again, using our fraction trick that we looked at at the beginning. Now the next part of this is we're going to look at multiplication. So I am taking my f function, 1 over x plus 1, and multiplying it times my g function, which is 2x over x minus 3. Now, in order to multiply two fractions together, what you're going to do is multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. I told you we're going to really revisit those fraction properties. So that gives me 2x times x plus 1 times x minus 3. And again, I'm just going to leave that denominator in its factored form. So multiplication... Not too bad. In this case, I like the multiplication versus the addition and subtraction. Then our first example, it went a little bit quicker. The last one we kind of need to bring to surface are fractional um, properties when we're doing division. So when we're doing F over G, we know that this is F over G. And so that would be equal to my F function, 1 over X plus 1, divided by 2X over X minus 3. And really, when you're working with fractions, it's better if you write this out horizontally. And I'll show you why. So this is 1 over x plus 1 divided by 2x over x minus 3. So when you're dividing two fractions, you may have heard this phrase. A lot of teachers may have taught you're going to keep the top one, change the operation, and flip the denominator. KCF, keep, change, flip. So how does that execute out horizontally? That means you're going to keep the first fraction, 1 over x plus 1, change it to multiplication. So you can see this is changing to multiplication. And then flip the last fraction. So that's x minus 3 over 2x.
Now we're back to the previous example. We're multiplying two fractions, so we'll multiply across the top and the bottom. So that would be equal to x minus 3 all over x plus 1 times 2x. And so we can just leave that in its factored form. Now this did take a little bit more, and I know that fractions are not everyone's favorite friend, but I just want to make sure we covered enough in the different examples to help you with the concept.